What up, Bucks fans, NFL fans, and gambling fans? Welcome to Week 18. We finally made it to the end of the regular season. Week 18 of Pewter Picks and Props brought to you by PewterReport.com and presented by Underdog Fantasy. Make sure you use that promo code Pewter, that's P-E-W-T-E-R, to sign up and get a first deposit bonus with Underdog Fantasy. I'm your host, Matt Matera, and I am so, so pumped to get into today's show. I believe it's the first of 2024, so Happy New Year to everybody. I think we're right around that cutoff date when we're already into 2024. You don't need to keep wishing everyone a Happy New Year, but nonetheless, hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody is following my picks, because when it comes to the Bucks games, specifically with the player props, I am scorching, scorching hot. With my Bucks picks two weeks in a row, three player parlays, so that's six picks overall. Hit them both, including a resounding, crazy ending to the Bucks Saints game for the prop bets with Chris Godwin hitting the over, Baker Mayfield as well, and Rashad White on his uh, receiving yards. Baker Mayfield had 89 passing yards going into the fourth quarter and still got it done. So you're never out when you're taking Matty Diamond's picks. Let's look at this week. It is Bucks versus Panthers. Huge game for the Bucks. If they win, they clinch the NFC South and punch their ticket to the postseason and host a home playoff game. So, mixing up a little bit, still going with a player who I love so, 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 so much and has done a great job as of late with his receiving yards, but going to go with his rushing yards this week, even though the Bucks have struggled in the run game, I'm starting off with Rashad White higher than 70 and a half rushing yards. You might be wondering, why am I taking Rashad White? The Bucks' run game has not been good over the past two weeks. That is totally true. However, the Carolina Panthers have a porous run-stopping defense. They allowed over 115 yards to Travis Etienne last week against the Jaguars. The Jaguars have a terrible run game. You saw that when the Bucks played against the Jaguars. They've allowed over 100 rushing yards to individuals many, many a times this season. And very recently as well, Rashad White went over uh, 100 yards or at least higher than 70 and a half rushing yards the last time that the Bucs played the Panthers. So you factor in Dave Canales is still going to want to run the football. The Panthers do a terrible job stopping the run. And all the injuries to Baker Mayfield, the rib injury specifically that everyone's been paying attention to, that gives the Bucs more of a reason to tote the rock with Rashad White. He's been getting it done in the passing game. I think he bounces back in the run game this week and gets over 70 and a half rushing yards. If you look at his stats as well, anytime in the since November, anytime Rashad White has gotten at least 15 rushing attempts, it's been seven times since November that he's gotten, you know, anywhere from 15 to 20 to 22 rushing attempts. He has gotten over this number of 70 in five out of those seven games where he got the, the, the higher number of uh, rushing attempts to get over 70 rushing yards. So they're going to feed Rashad white. He gets over and higher than 70 and a half rushing yards. My next pick, and I have four overall for the bucks My last pick I'll explain in a little bit. But next up, Michael Lynn Evans, the greatest offensive player in Tampa Bay Buccaneers history, went off against the Panthers in their first matchup, went off against the Panthers both times last season, including a game where they needed to win in order to set themselves up to clinch the division. So I like, for underdog fantasy purposes, I really like 62.5 receiving yards. But What I absolutely love, and if you can find this on a different gambling site, Uh, Whatever site you want to use, there's some different prop bets. The longest reception of over 24 and a half yards. I absolutely love, 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 love that for Mike Evans. The Panthers, for whatever reason, are one of those teams that just do not want to double Mike Evans. They don't want to bracket him, and it's all to their fault. You want to keep doing that? Fine. Mike Evans is going to absolutely rip you to shreds, and I think Mike does that again coming hot off of another Pro Bowl nomination and a start as well. So congrats to Mike on that accolade. So if you're playing underdog fantasy, 
I like the over of 62 and a half receiving yards. I don't think Mike's going to get 100 in this game because they do want to feed Chris Godwin as well and get him over 1,000 receiving yards. By the way, another reason to take Rashad White, he is close to getting 1,000 rushing yards. So if the Bucs can build the lead against the Panthers, they're going to make sure their guys hit those uh, those those landmarks, those uh, incentives that they might be able to get. So anyway, back to Mike Evans. Going to rip the Panthers to shred. I like the higher than 62 and a half receiving yards. I freaking love, love, Maddie Diamonds loves the longest reception of over 24 and a half receiving yards uh, by Mike Evans on any given play. I think he's going to get a 35 yarder within the first half. That's just my prediction. Um, really like this matchup for Mike. My last Buccaneers pick, Chase Money McLaughlin. Money Mac, I've been calling him because he has been lights out this season, kicking his field goals. Did not get many opportunities last week, but not because of his fault. The Bucs had four turnovers last week against the Saints. Three times they turned it over in their own uh, scoring opportunity, in their own red zone. So I do not see the Bucs turning the ball over four times, including three in the red zone. Um, they can get the ball into scoring opportunities. This team is good in the red zone, but they're not great. So Chase McLaughlin's going to have a couple of opportunities to um, kick some field goals, make some big time kicks, maybe a 50 yarder and then a chip shot, 34 yarder, something like that. I think the Bucks will be able to score. I know all the injuries to, uh, to Baker Mayfield. But they're going to find a way. Their backs are against the wall. They're going to be livid for how they played against the Saints last week. So uh, Chase McLaughlin, higher than one and a half field goals. I really like that. Now, if you know with underdog fantasy, you got to pick at least two different teams. Typically, I like to go with the Bucs and then whoever they're playing that game because we're all watching that Bucs game. However, this week, all gambling sites, including underdog fantasy, are uh, still trying to figure out the numbers for a lot of the Carolina Panthers plays. So as we record this show at the moment, there are not a lot of uh, player props out for Carolina Panthers players. Maybe some of it's because of injury and the last week of the season. Because of that, I'm not just going to pick a Panthers prop willy-nilly. That would be ridiculous. That would be egregious. And uh, I'm not going to do that to everybody that is tailing my picks. So what I am going to do instead, since I am going to pick another game, I have to for underdog fantasy. I'm going to keep it in the NFC South because the Saints and the Falcons have a really big game coming up this week. Um, if the Bucs end up losing, the winner of Saints-Falcons ends up getting the uh, NFC South division crown. So my last player prop for underdog fantasy is not a Carolina Panthers player. It's actually an Atlanta Falcons player, and that is B. John Robinson. I'm going higher than 82 and a half rushing and receiving yards combined. B. John has taken the reins over as the starting running back. He's still not getting a crazy amount of rushing attempts, but he's gotten at least 70-plus rushing yards in his last two games. He is so explosive. Anytime you get the ball in his hands, I think – there's going to be an opportunity for a lot of receptions for him and a lot of receiving yards. So that's going to balance itself out. I see him getting something like 65 rushing yards and maybe 20 receiving yards or a big screen pass, pass breaks for about 70 yards, something like that. Bijan Robinson's electrifying, can do a lot of great stuff. So really like Bijan Robinson, higher than 82 and a half rushing and receiving yards. So those are my picks, my player props for the Bucks game and the NFC South. Got Rashad White higher, Mike Evans higher. I'm going higher all uh, all way to start the new year because sometimes betting the higher is, uh, and over is more fun. McLaughlin with his field goals and then Bijan Robinson, 82 and a half rushing and receiving yards. Just a reminder to everybody, the show is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy and their pickums. what I just talked about, is so much fun to do. So head on over to Underdog Fantasy. Download the app. Use the promo code Pewter, P-E-W-T-E-R. Get a first deposit bonus when you play um, over at Underdog Fantasy. Make anywhere from two to five picks and win up to 20 times your money. All right. 
Those are my player props. Of course, we always look at the Bucks game as well. The Bucks are four and a half point favorite, and the over is 37. This game is taking place in Carolina. Let's remember, last time I picked the Panthers to cover the spread, and they did. The Bucs won. However, the Panthers covered. I'm going to take the Bucs minus four and a half. I do not think this game is going to be easy by any means. This whole season has been a roller coaster for Tampa Bay. With that said, they are a better team when they play on the road offensively. And I, I know the they have the same amount of wins at home and on the road. But offensively, they average about 24 points per game on the road. Only 18 points per game at home. Baker Mayfield's rib injuries is a huge, huge storyline in this game. With that said, I watched him throw at practice over the past couple of days. Baker said himself that adrenaline is going to be pumping. It's a winner go home game. Baker wants to beat Carolina and clinch a playoff spot and the division on Carolina's field because he's played there before. It's going to see how we'll see how he can torque his ribs and, and move around, but he was able to throw with some power uh, in practice, especially on Friday. And he's not going to have to throw a crazy amount of deep balls. It's going to be intermediate. It's going to be 15 to 20 yards down the field. I think Baker will be healthy enough to play. Um, and the Bucks are so boomer bust on defense. They did not get any turnovers last week. They barely got to the quarterback. So they're going to make up for it this week. The Panthers do a terrible job of pass protecting. So Todd Bowles going to send the blitz. Maybe Yaya Diaby makes a big play. I think the Panthers will kind of stay in it for the first half. And then the Bucks start to break away in the second half. And because the Bucs are so reliant on the blitz, they have the worst passing defense in the league. So 37 is very, very low. I do think the Panthers can do their part, score at least 14 points, maybe 17 points because the Bucs make any quarterback look good. They play off the line of scrimmage in their coverage. They don't always get to the quarterback. And if they don't, it's they're still blitzing. And that leaves a little, a lot of one-on-one -on -one opportunities for uh, Panthers receivers or just receivers in general. So Bucks offense plays better on the road, averaging around 24. It's a do or die game for the Bucks. Their backs are against the wall for every reason why I like the saints last week. That's why I like the Bucks this time around. They know that a lot of jobs are on the line playing in this game. So I'll take the Bucks minus four and a half and the over of 37, because it's very low. If it was like 43, 44, I'd probably take the under, but 37 is very, very low, and the Bucs are better on the road. So I'll take the Bucs minus four and a half and the over of 37. To close out the show, yeah, lost my voice there. To close out the show, got three NFL picks. Week 18 is a lot of fun because it's a lot of like do or die, win or go home type of situations. The Bucs are in that. Uh, but it also gets very, very odd because there are teams that have clinched. They don't have anything to play for. Therefore, they don't start their starters. And that makes the spreads and, and everything like that much tougher to do. So my first pick is a battle of two teams trying to make the postseason. Um, it's the Texans and Colts. I'm going to take the over of 47 and a half. I know it's kind of a high number, but CJ Stroud is a ton of fun to watch and one of those guys that just kind of wills his team to, to get the best out of them. So it's going to be a knock him out, drag him out type of game until the end. Gardner Minshew absolutely likes to sling it. I think they can take advantage of the Texans defense and put some points up on the board. Seems like every AFC South game has been absolutely crazy this week. It's the first game on Saturday, so it's going to have a lot more attention than if it was lost in the shuffle on, on Sunday. So I'll take the over 47 and a half. This next game, super, super fun. A battle of um, backup quarterbacks that were once supposed to be the future of this league and are now backups. Um, it's the 49ers at home against the LA Rams. So you got Sam Darnold starting for the 49ers, and you got Carson Wentz starting for LA. Both teams don't really have much to play for, both making it into the postseason want to keep their teams healthy. I trust the talent of the 49ers, even with their backups and the system of the 49ers over Carson Wentz, who just got there recently 
and uh, the rest of the roster of the Rams. So this is just trusting Sam Darnold, having been there since the beginning, since training camp. He played a little bit on Christmas as well. Because of that, I'll take Sam Darnold, knowing this offense a bit more than Carson Wentz, and uh, with the 49ers, minus four against the Bills. uh, Against the Bills. uh, Jump the gun there. Against the Rams. My next game features the Bills. Dolphins, Bills, Sunday night football. Going to be an awesome game to watch. Um, The number two seed in the AFC. And the AFC East is up for grabs. Bills have to win in order to get into the playoffs just to begin with, uh, unless a couple of teams lose and, and things of that nature. I think if the Steelers lose, that helps them out as well. But remember, the Bills beat the Dolphins earlier in the season. Now the game, I believe, is in Miami, if I'm not mistaken. But even if it's not, I think it is in Miami. The Dolphins, plus two and a half, I am taking them. They need to clinch that number two seed. They need to clinch the AFC East. They got their asses whooped last week against the Ravens. That was an embarrassment. So you go from two weeks ago where they made a statement, they beat a good team with the Cowboys in Miami, then they got destroyed by the Ravens the following week. This is the last opportunity for the Dolphins to show that they are not a soft, candy-ass team. This is the last time I'm taking the Dolphins. If they lose this game, if they don't cover this game, Bills can win by two for all I care. I don't give a damn. If the Dolphins do not cover this week, I am not taking them at all in the playoffs because then they just showed that they are soft. But for now, you got Tua, you got Tyreek Hill. I hope his family's okay. I know that was scary with the fire to his house uh, that came about this week. You got Tua, you got Tyreek. I still think the Dolphins can do some stuff on defense physically to cause some issues for uh, Josh Allen, who can turn the ball over. I like the Dolphins plus two and a half against the Bills. Again, a little bit of a revenge factor. Bills won that first contest. I'll take Miami in round two at plus two and a half. So, to go over my picks one more time from the beginning, player props, Rashad White higher, Mike Evans higher, Chase McLaughlin higher on the field goals, B. John Robinson higher, on the total scrimmage yards. Bucks minus four and a half in the over of 37. Then we got Tex Colts, Texans, Colts over 47 and a half. 49ers minus four and Dolphins plus two and a half. Uh, I'll tweet this stuff out before the game starts as well. Uh, maybe I'll add a, a little thing here or there, maybe a defensive prop too. Um, in the meantime, please follow Peter Report on uh, all of our social media at Peter Report. And, of course, our YouTube channel is uh, Pewter Reports TV. So on Facebook, Threads, Instagram, and X, at Pewter Report, and then the YouTube channel, Pewter Report TV. If you want to follow me on my social media, I am at Maddie 4 underscore Matera. And on Instagram, I'm at Maddie underscore Matera. So you just take out the four. Appreciate everybody watching this show. Love all the support that you guys have had from week one all the way to week 18. I'll still be putting out picks in the playoffs, especially um, if the Bucs are playing. Um, You guys are the best. Cannot do this show without you. Love interacting with everybody about the picks as well. So good luck. And for the last time of the regular season, let's win some money.